Who's that girl in the shades there? <laughs> 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 Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of North Courts. We've got a special guest for you later in the program. Make sure you stay locked in. For now, as we always do, we're gonna head to the line for three. And I think off the top, I just wanna recognize what Dwight Powell is doing. Megan, what have you seen out of him? I think coming back from an injury that serious, I mean, what, five, 10 years ago, that was known as a career ender. And he's been able to get himself back into the rhythm, get himself back in team chemistry. And that's really the biggest thing that you want to see is how do they bounce back? How did Kevin Durant bounce back? How do you see these guys bouncing back from serious injuries? And I think for Dwight, it's simply just being able to be back on the floor again and get his rhythm back. I'm not expecting him to put up huge, huge numbers and be the guy he was pre-injury. I'm just simply happy that he's back on the floor, being able to play the game he plays and loves. And you know what, to add to what you said, Maggie, you just have to be happy for a guy like that. One, when you look at you know his career from the big picture, he's not a guy that has had anything handed to him. Then you add this, this injury, like you said, that could have been career ending uh, had this been four or five years ago. Uh, and, and then you just look at how he, he, he's got his rhythm, uh, he's playing in flow, he's just understanding and also maturing uh, in, in the development of his game this, this far at this point in his career. So, I, you know, you definitely have to be excited for him and just really appreciate him because he's really, you know, created this space on his own. And he's always been a guy that's taken care of his body, uh, been well spoken in, in all of his initiatives in the community and so forth. So I think it goes far beyond just what he does on the court and just, you know, what he's been able to accomplish now is just a testament to his, his character. Just to tell you what he's been doing after finding that groove over the first few months in May, he's averaging 10.5 points, 7.2 rebounds, 1.8 blocks over his last 22 games. He's shooting over 70% from the field. So it's great to see. You have to love it. You said, you know, he's not someone that maybe puts up those monster numbers, but just gives you the contributions that you need. And obviously the Dallas Mavs, they're winning, looking good for that playoff picture. Someone who has been putting up monster numbers is Russell Westbrook. Obviously, this isn't Canadian content, but when someone sets an all-time record, we have to acknowledge it. 182 career triple doubles now, nothing but respect. Javon, when you look at his game, what stands out to you? You know what? Hate it. Whether you hate or love Russell Westbrook, you have to give him credit. He's a guy that as soon as that ball is tossed up, he competes. Um, and the fact that he's able to impact the game on so many levels, I think people you know, take, don't really understand how hard it is to not alone get one triple-double, but you know, now league history is made. So I think that's, you know, something to be said about that. He's definitely a hall of famer. And I, I think, you know, early on in his career, there was a little misconception in, in the in type of personal character that he is. And I think teammates love playing with him and he does a good job getting guys involved, does a good job scoring and just, you know, a big time contributor to, to his clubs. Yeah, Javon, if, if getting a triple double on a consistent basis with, was easy, it wouldn't have taken 47 years for that record to be broken. And that record would have been broken probably by LeBron James a long time ago. So that just shows you how hard it is to do this, not only on a consistent basis, but on a nightly basis. Uh, he's going not only for the record he was, but also, too, he's consistently doing this season after season. This is not just a one-off situation for him. And I think a lot of people misconstrue what he does on a nightly basis and his impact because he doesn't have that title to go with it. In my opinion, the title is, is, is a bonus. I think when you look at what he does, the numbers tell the story. He's not just getting, you know, 12 points, 11 assists, 11 rebounds. He's consistently averaging over 20 points. He's consistently averaging over 11 rebounds. He averages more rebounds on the season than Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. He is six, Three, we need to give the man his flowers when he can still enjoy it. And he's one of the most humble people ever. He doesn't typically want to take the the, the night away and, and, and talk about himself. But I respect the fact he took last night to embrace the moment and embrace himself. It's unfortunate it came in a loss. Uh, but what he's been able to do on, on the floor has been none, none, nothing less than absolutely 
amazing and fantastic. And we need to give him his flowers now. Joining us now is a very special guest, a man who needs no introduction. And honestly, if I gave him an introduction, we'd be here all day because he's coached 15 teams in four countries. <laughs> Nick Nurse, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Welcome. Good to see everybody. Thanks for having me. Nick, to start off, uh, can you give us some insight into basically how you keep track of all the Canadian talent that's out there? We've talked about how mm -hmm. this is a golden age uh, yeah. for Canada basketball, but whether it's in Europe or here in the NBA, how are you keeping track of everyone? And maybe who do you trust to be your eyes and ears for what you can see? Well, let me let me give you the, the kind of the 30,000 foot view first. Um, but first of all, the staff, I get a email about every other day with the um, stats of everybody from all over the world. So there's kind of a big, big list, long, big, long list, as you know, NBA, uh, college, uh, Europe, uh, whatever, wherever everybody's playing of just their just their numbers and their game, the result, you know, how many minutes, you know, just the stat read so I can just kind of take that look um, a few times a week that's all prepared by by Phil Yetovich our analytics and and assistant coach I like he's such a good good dude good basketball guy um, and then obviously I um, I watch a lot of NBA games that's no different than the normal for me I do tend to stick around a little longer for a game that maybe not be that much interest to my Raptor job. Last night was a good example. I was kind of done for the night and decided to watch the end, you know, the, the last quarter and a half of the Memphis game where Brandon Clark had a nice little flurry there in the game. So, you know, there's, there's a bunch of guys playing and I can almost always find one of those each night to watch. Um, and I do once in a while throw on a Euro league game or something, you know, somebody will say, Hey, Pangos had a big night last night, and then I'll just get my film guys to tell them to put it on my TV in the office on the way into the office. And I'll, you know, you can usually watch those games in 45 minutes or an hour and spend that much time doing that. But that's probably the, the gist of it, you know. Nick, when you look at, you know, putting together not only the roster, you also have to put together your coaching staff in your opinion, which one would you say is more difficult given that you have more than just team Canada head coach responsibilities when it comes to comprising the roster, but also comprising your coaching staff, knowing that they're your eyes and ears yeah. when you can't be around. Well, it's a good question. I mean, the, the playing side of it's, you know, so, so a lot more difficult just because there's so many guys and there's so many like, um, situations, right. You know, what, you know, injuries and contracts and, you know, there's lots of things uh, playoffs. Are they going to be still playing? You know, there's so many variables there with them. And then, um, you know, we, we, I always try to kind of put a coaching staff together. That's that kind of hits a lot of the avenues that I want to hit. You know, I like, you know, one or two guys that, know me inside and out that I've worked with for a long time. So they can kind of convey the messages in the, in the communication um, for me, help me do that because they know how I, how I would like things said and done and things like that. Um, we made a, certainly a big Avenue down the middle for, for Canadian young, you know, Canadian coaches, uh, both experienced middle and, and young, right. We trying to, trying to kind of, you know, get the best guys with experience. You know, Gordy's had tons of international experience, so he was a great choice. Um, he was already you know, kind of in place, and and I'd known him for a long time anyway. You know, and so that was a, a smooth one there. And, and coach, Mike, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Meeks has been around and got a chance to just get to know him and loved loved him. And Nate Mitchell was here with the you know nine oh five and the Raptor. So it. You know, there was a good Canadian piece there. I brought in John Goodwillie, another Canadian, but it's also kind of one of my right hand, hand men here at Toronto. So there's, a, you know, a good thing. And then we always try to make sure we got a, a avenue of some FIBA guys that are that are entrenched coaching over there that are kind of up to date with whatever kind of there's always seems to be some new stuff flowing offensively or defensively over there and just to kind of keep up to date on that. So that's that answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you something more on a personal level. Okay. You obviously won the championship, won the Raptor championship in 19 and then named 
uh, the senior men's national head coach. What changed for you personally uh, after that? I, I imagine people start to approach you a uh, different and call you sir or, or <laughs> no. sir to give you the coach, but. No, no I mean, you know, obviously, um, um, you know, I used to be able to kind of walk around the streets or ride my bike to work or things like that. And, 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 you know, just like everybody else did, but, but then it kind of got to, it got to, uh, I don't know if I'd go to the grocery store. I seemed to a 20 minute trip would turn into a 45 minute trip because, uh, you know, lots of people want to take selfies and things like that. You know, how, you know how it changed, but it's, it's all good. Everybody was, was so nice. And, um, so excited and appreciative of the, you know, of what the Raptors organization did and everybody was glued into it. Right. I mean, it, even though it's been a couple of years now, everybody still talks about, I was on the, I was on a plane and six of us were huddled together and the, and the, you know, they were letting us watch it, you know, and I'll, you know, or I was here, or I was in San Diego or I was, you know, I get a lot of those stories. I don't get tired of hearing them. I think it's, it really was a magical moment and run. And, um, well, I was on TV a lot, so I guess everybody recognized me now. <laughs> so there, there you go, right? Lots of press conferences and lots of that that two month run of of kind of you and you know, and it ends up you know you're one of you know a handful of teams playing, and then at the last month or you're about one of four, and then it's just you and one other team for a good chunk of time. So the basketball world zeroed in on it, that's for sure. Well, I was. Uh... At a football game. No, I'm joking. I won't, I, won't, I won't tell you by where I was. Sorry. Um, but I will say, though, everyone in D.C. was rooting me on through you guys once it got down to you and Golden State. So that was kind of cool just to be in D.C. and have everybody kind of lift me up at the same time through through you guys. But I wanted to to turn it back to just, you know, you trying to balance everything. You're trying to prepare for qualifiers, but you also have your responsibilities with the Raptors. What are you doing in your life to balance everything? Because it's it's hard enough to just balance your work and life as an NBA head coach, but you also have the addition of the senior men's head coach. So what are you doing to balance everything yeah. and how heavily are you relying on your coaching staff? Yeah, you know, first of all, you you do have to have a, a great staff and, and not only coaching staff, but just, you know, office staff and organizational staff and and um, those guys um, uh, really, really put in a lot of planning work, you know, um, you know, I'm happy to say we have, you know, we've got to update these players and I'm happy to say that we had a, we had a call yesterday. We had one maybe 10 days ago and, and I don't know, something like 38 of the 40 players were on the zoom. You know, I think two guys were, were on planes or something in Europe and couldn't make it or something, you know, there was, there was like such great participation and all that's organized by the by the staff, right? And and again, like if I wanted to watch that Kevin Pangos game from Spain, it would take me a while to find it and get it up on my computer. But I could, you know, I can make a call and have a, have you know my 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 people get it ready, and that saves me time. And you know, you do have to you do have to organize it that way, and have some people that are that are willing to you know sacrifice and work hard for for Canada and the team and the organization. That's the big thing, and then you know, the rest of it's just kind of, you know, normal, man. You guys know, I like play the guitar and play the piano to chill out. And I, you know, I try to do my meditation and as much as I can do some yoga, you know, I, I got to kind of do that stuff to revitalize my energy daily anyway, which we probably all should do no matter what we're doing. Right. So I need you to dig deep on this one. Every <laughs> former coach, Every former player that's that's played in Europe or coached in Europe always has some horror stories, um, whether it be miss miss payments. I'm still missing yeah. a couple, or you know, in the gym with with no heat, no AC. Yeah. Um, what's one that sticks out to you? Well, plenty of plenty of uh, cold gyms, man. That was whew. we played we played one year in the Northern European Basketball League, right? And uh, man, we were in some cold gyms and cold hotels and all kinds of stuff, but. Got to see some really cool cities, right? That was that was big benefit. I don't know. The one story I always tell was my very first year over there. I was a player coach. 
the team said, um, we're reading your cover letter here. It says you're interested in playing and or coaching. And they said, how about both? And I said, sure, I'll be there Saturday. So we were, <laughs> I was a player coach. I was about 21 years old. I wasn't even old enough. We used to drive these mini buses. You know, they were like big vans that held supposedly 15, 15 people, but about seven basketball players. And yeah. I couldn't even drive one. I wasn't old enough to, uh, I had to have my, my starting center drove and I sat in the passenger side, but of course it broke down one time on the way home from a, from a game. And we were literally out in the country pitch black. This is, this is pre cell phone era. I'm dating myself. So we're walking up the road, looking, trying to figure out who to call and a way to call somebody. And I was just like looking out into the darkness going, a, where am I? And B, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, you know, so plenty of, plenty of those broke, broken down buses and vans. And I could go on and on with those stories for sure. <laughs> well, Nick, I just want to thank you for joining us here at North Courts. Really appreciate the time. Really appreciate everything that you're doing for the Toronto Raptors and the Team Canada men's senior team. And wish you nothing but uh, the best of luck going forward. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for your guys' support. And honored and humbled to be the coach of the Raptors and Canada, man. It's it's really a true true and honor for me. How we get our Nick Nurse hats? Well, you you have to go to my foundation website and purchase them. I, I'd love to give you one, but then you'd be taking money out of the program. So, <laughs> Nick Nurse uh, Foundation org. I think you can have as many as you want. Now let's get to our favorite segment that everyone looks forward to, our starting fives. This one is inspired by Nick Nurse. Obviously, he's coached all over the world. So we are, want to shout out the players who haven't got that NBA opportunity. And so looking at some of the names, obviously, we've all got Kevin Pangos and Dylan Innes and Melvin Edgem in there. Javon, why don't you tell us about a couple of those names, Daisha Pierre or uh, Aaron Dornkamp? Well, Aaron Dornan Camp, he's a throwback, um, you know, a guy that I played with in, with the national team. And I think, you know, he's he's a warrior. He's playing for Tenerife, Spain right now. Um, and he's had a long lasting career. I think when you have a guy like that that's impactful and has, has been able to play at so many levels, you have to give him his flowers like Megan likes to say. Um, and then Dyshawn Pierre, I think he's having, a, you know, an exceptional EuroLeague, a season in, at the EuroLeague level, Fenerbahce, and, you know, for his first time out at the EuroLeague level, for those that may not know, that's, you know, probably the second best, or is the second best league outside of the NBA. Uh, for, and for a guy in his rookie season there to be shooting 60% from the floor, um, it says a lot about him. And, I, and I'm excited to see what he does going forward and potentially with our national team. Megan, tell us about Ryan Wright. I mean, what what is there left to say about Ryan Wright? He's been a consistent he's been a consistent player overseas and a consistent uh, athlete when it comes to what he's been able to do with his career. Uh, I remember the days of watching him play in in high school. You know, him putting up huge monster games uh, across Ontario, not just in the GTA, not just in Mississauga, but consistently in tournaments, multiple different tournaments within Hamilton. So he's coming from the GTA to Hamilton and, and completely destroying teams and destroying rims. So being able to see him continue his playing career now overseas and the longevity that he's been able to have as well, too, with his, with his international play has been really fantastic. And can I just say that initially I followed the rules on this uh but then Javon wanted to open his mouth I actually had our very own Javon Shepard on my list but since he wanted to talk that talk I removed him from my list so you you played yourself Shep you played I yourself. wanted I wanted the people to crucify her this time so I'll, hey, I'll, I'll step back I, I'll, we I thought we were following the rules but we did not so you know what I decided to remove you from my list Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I, I think a couple recently retired people who deserve a shout out and maybe didn't get that full NBA opportunity. Javon Shepard, for sure. I think Brady Heslop is another one. Obviously had his time with the 905 where he was doing big things. Uh, but those two guys have done, definitely lo done a lot for Canadian basketball. Uh, the last one I want to shout out is Keza Kajami Keen. I think he's another one who's just stepped up to the plate for Team Canada whenever he's been asked. He had that great season with the 905. And so uh, I think you've got a lot of these players. Again, we talk about the golden age of Canada basketball. You've got a lot of these players outside the NBA doing big things, and they all deserve their shine. 
that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you again in a couple weeks. Bye.